Welcome and thank you everyone for coming today. Um, going virtual has been an absolutely wild ride, but so far it has been a great success and we are so happy to have you all with us. Um, I'd like to introduce our wonderful artist guest of honor and keynote speaker this afternoon, Caitlin Zupanik. We are absolutely honored to have her with us and be able to learn from her here at LTUE. Caitlin never doubted what she would be when she grew up. She always wanted to be an artist. On school assignments, she would label herself as one, even if it wasn't an option. She needed to explore her own fantasy worlds and create mythical creatures to live in them. The horses, chickens, dogs, cats, and many other animals she grew up with became her main inspiration, but her favorite creature to draw lived only in her imagination. Dragons took shape on countless pages. Fantasy books, games, and movies fueled Caitlin's love of dragons, and she decided she wanted to create them for the video game and industry to see them live. She took all of the painting and illustration classes she could and achieved an Associate of Arts and Science degree in animation in 2014. She primarily focused on anatomy and animals in fantasy illustration. Shortly after graduation, she discovered that her love for animation and 3D modeling hadn't been as strong as her love for painting. In the fall of 2015, she took a fine art illustration course with Howard Lyons. She honed her skills and branched out into oil painting. Using past and present masterwork painters as her new inspiration, she now hopes to make her fantastical ideas come to life in digital and traditional paintings. Please welcome Caitlin Zupanek. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me. Um, LTUE, uh, life, the universe, and everything has always been a cherished convention, uh, very close to my heart for quite a few years. It has seen me grow as a person and artist throughout a formative time in my artistic evolution. Imagine my delight at being asked to be a guest of honor this year. It was one of the things that made 2020 bearable. As I know many of you have had similar hopes and dreams for the past year. Sadly, 2020 didn't quite fit the bill for the majority of us. This convention provided something to look forward to, a culmination of everything that I have worked so hard to achieve, with hopefully more to come in the future. To call it an honor to be here would be a huge understatement. It's undoubtedly a blessing to be here today and speak on my experiences and helping teach the next creative generation. At the beginning of any career, you will mess up. It's really impossible to avoid. Things won't go your way and you may realize a single choice or opportunity has changed the trajectory of your life, goals, and career. If you're lucky, you may recognize that this small change was a miracle hidden in a perceived disaster. Life has a funny way of steering you in the right direction if you pay attention and learn from the past find a way to persevere despite mistakes uh, they make you better for it in the long run even if it doesn't seem like it at first my very first journey into the art environment online was extremely toxic uh, it caused me to develop a plethora of bad habits that needed to be fixed, and there was a lot of lessons to learn. One of the most important ones was everyone is on their own artistic journey, going at their own speed, and each trip is just as unique as the individual taking it. No steps are in the same order or even included. However, the one underlying factor that always stays the same, the drive to create. 
the reason for your journey's uh, hardships, the reason why you're doing what you're doing right now. My drive, of course, was dragons. Uh, today, all of you have that drive, that passion for something, even if you haven't found it yet. Keep searching for your passion and don't let it go when you find it. Even if something is preventing you from working or your drive is missing, figure out why. Passion can only take you so far unless you are willing to put in the hours, not just into your craft, but also yourself, improving your character, your confidence, and strengthening your morals along the way is just as important as your artistic growth. It is what makes your craft, your voice, and your spark that helps people connect with your work. This includes getting help when needed and seeking guidance. It is your responsibility to advocate for your future and your creative goals. For me, attention deficit hyperactive disorder was a roadblock preventing me from reaching my full potential. It had always been there, but never officially diagnosed until recently. This, unfortunately, led to many pitfalls and shortcomings uh, due to how my brain functions, a neurodivergent brain, uh, as it is now called. Thankfully, it also has shaped my artistic evolution. Some aspects of it fit creativity like a glove, such as my ability to hyper-focus on the details in my paintings. Sadly, though, that wasn't all life had in store for me. Uh, I went through near-death death experiences, uh, a few strokes, mild and significant, significant with many unforeseen circumstances tripping me up. The feeling of hitting the point of no return, a dead end with my art, uh, hounded me constantly. Uh, and yet, my dream of becoming a successful artist continued. Knowing then, what is known now. Art is my calling and why life and the world around me is worth living. Finding your spark and what drives you to create is one of the most important lessons all individuals need to learn, not just creatives. Everybody needs that spark. For me, again, that was dragons and mythical creatures. The wondrous beauty of nature around me. But still, something was missing. And the search continued. Figure out what drove me to create and improve. Finding what environment worked for me to cultivate my artistic vision. Eventually, a few choice encounters, uh, such as my encounter with Howard Lyon, uh, and uh, my creative bubble has started to form. As my interactions with more and more artists began at conventions, the realization hit me. My creativity requires me to be surrounded by other creative individuals. To actively participate in a creative life, 
attending lectures and paint nights, uh, joining online groups, uh, surrounding me with artists that inspired me. Those who raised me up, but not just me, everybody around them, and accepted me despite my shortcomings. Finding relationships that inspire you is the most important lesson that I have learned and being willing to do so for others. Be willing to give back as much as you receive and if possible, give even more. You are the culmination of everyone around you. Thankfully, I have an amazing support system of friends, family, uh, other artists that I can rely on. And I know that they can also rely on me. And they shape your life and your reality. Thankfully, as well, that is precisely what LTUE is. Not only a convention, but a family of individuals who want to learn and grow. One that inspires and helps create a better tomorrow. These next few years will be rough, especially for those of us who are in the creative field. Together, we can survive this and be better for it. And in my opinion, we are LTUE strong, and I'm very happy to be a part of LTUE this year. I didn't want to have a speech go for the entire time. I would really like to be able to have everyone in the crowd ask questions, or if you have any comments, uh, has anything that I've said resonated with you? Or uh, do you have just, I guess, any questions? First question is, as a creator, what process do you go through to channel your ideas into your art? That is a very, very in-depth question. I have a couple of different ways that I try to channel my work. The first one is if I'm having a hard time channeling an idea or getting into the headspace to work, I will always, always uh, open up either YouTube or Patreon and try to find my other fellow artistic friends and coworkers and see what they're working on and go through any videos or tutorials that they might have, uh, putting on a good video and just listening to someone talk while they work has been really helpful in getting me to start having ideas flow. I also love going out into nature uh, and just kind of taking a bunch of random photos and seeing what sticks. I'll also search through uh, Pinterest or other image sites and just try to find something fun to channel my creative ideas if nothing's coming. Usually I'll do five or six warm up sketches before anything will really stick. Okay. We have a question. Uh, can you talk a bit more about your hand injury and how that has affected you uh, and how you had, did you have to relearn how to draw? Absolutely. Um, the stroke that I had ended up being on the left side of my brain in my cerebellum. So I had to retrain, basically. The th thankfully, it was in a part of the brain that was able to actually recover and regain those neural connections. But I did have to retrain uh, my hand 
to be able to take the signals that I had here and translate them onto paper. I probably had gone back about 10 years in my creative ability as far as drawing goes. And it still does affect me at some points, uh, but it's not something that uh, interferes with my day-to-day -day life. I've been able to overcome that. And it took probably about a good six months of just perseverance and trying to forge those pathways in my brain and reconnect them to make uh, what I wanted in my head to come out on paper. Okay. Author Troy asks, how do you impart so much emotion into your art? Your dragons are so expressive. Wonderful. Thank you, Troy. Um, I honestly put a lot of myself into my work. Uh, I have been through quite a lot, not as much as some, uh, and I'm definitely grateful for that, but it's definitely the driving factor in why I put so much emotion into my dragons, because for me, I'm a very uh, emotive person, and I like to be able to connect to art on an emotional level, as I'm sure most of you do as well. But having the dragon actually be a sentient creature where you could look into their eyes and say, hey, there's something else there. It's not just an inanimate creature that can't really think. It's not a force of destruction. It's a force of nature that has thoughts, feelings, and uh, a drive towards wanting to live and wanting to interact with the world around it. Okay. Uh, with building your creator community, what advice do you have about setting boundaries? Can you get overwhelmed trying to keep up with everybody else? Absolutely. It's hard and good. It's, it's a double-edged sword. It's important to not compare yourself to other artists because they're not on the same journey that you're on. They're at a different level, as in they've been practicing longer or they have chosen to focus on something that you haven't chosen to focus on. It's very, very, very important. I can't impress this enough that you focus on what you are good at and not letting that go and not letting the fact that someone else is better at architecture or people or any of the other things that you feel you're lacking in. Because while they might have spent all of that time working on their craft, they oftentimes have had something that they haven't focused on and they're not as skilled in. And that's part of what makes everybody's art unique. Your voice carries through. And as long as you stay true to your voice and what you're wanting to create, it will show and you will be able to get jobs and work or just whatever it is that you're seeking with your art if you persevere with it. It's hard to... Sometimes it's hard to keep up with, you know, commenting or interacting with all of the artists that I have in my personal circle. And we all get that. It's, it's hard. But pick at least a couple artists that inspire you that you can actively participate in their conversations that they have on their Facebook or Twitter feed or Patreon feed. And definitely let the artist know if you like their work. That's how you start building those connections is by conversing and talking with other artists. But be sure to keep a boundary and not overextend yourself 
and just be willing to give what you can. And sometimes that'll be maybe only with one or two artists. Other times you might be able to follow, say, five or ten artists and actively participate and uh, be willing to want to talk about their work. Um, other times it might only be just a couple, and that'll shift depending on how much work you have and what you're focusing on and what your goals are. Uh, do you have any advice for making space for yourself to create against expectations or invitations of friends and family? That is actually a really hard one for me. Um, I really tend to overextend myself a lot of the time, especially with family. And that can be a good and bad thing, but you do need to realize that setting boundaries so that you can create is needed. And that's one thing that I've been actively working on. Uh, we have a very full household. There are 10 people in my house. Uh, it's extended family, multiple generations, and I love them all very, very dearly. Uh, setting boundaries is important. Uh, especially if you live with multiple people. And just saying, hey, you know, I'm going to be working from this time until this time. So please refrain from messaging me or uh, calling me. This is my work time. Oftentimes, even now when people are working from home, uh, they don't really, they, they can't really negotiate their time. And us as creative individuals who are working from home, we have a little bit more leeway where we can say, okay, we're going to be working this time and we can try to make it work around your schedule so that everything else gets done. You'll still have a few hiccups, but definitely put your foot down and just be like, no, I need time to work. This is my career and this is what I'd like to do. So keeping an open dialogue with your family or whoever you live with is very important and uh, will help you in the long run to create a creative space and make it uh, a place where you want to go and work. Uh, add inspiration such as I have inspiration all over my walls. I have artwork everywhere. Um, Heather Edwards, uh, Howard Lyon, uh, oh, goodness, Justin Gerard. Uh, I have a little piece done by my friend Dustin right here. Just put things that make you want to create in your space and make a habit and a ritual for getting into the creative mindset along with setting boundaries. Sosha asks, how do you determine the colors you would like to use for a project? Oof, that one is hard for me. Uh, normally, I stick with black and white first, and then I add color afterwards with a lot of my illustrations, uh, especially with Genesis here. Uh, this is one of my recent pieces that you can see in the art show. Uh, I actually went through at least probably five or six different color variations. Um, Color's not as easy for me as it is for other artists. So I'll tend to make a smaller image of it on my iPad and I'll just kind of mess around with colors. I'll add, like, I'll play with um, complementary color schemes and just kind of see what direction the piece is going in. If I'm really stuck, I'll look at color palettes on. Um, Pinterest uh, or other photos, even just regular like photography. If I love the color palette in a photo, I can try to use that uh, to set a mood, especially in my pieces. Um, I'm switching more to a little bit more of a not quite as vibrant color scheme as I used to work, say like a year or two ago, um, but definitely trying to experiment with just small thumbnails and 
try to see what works best while using something that's already there, like a photograph, really helps. Jim asks, overcoming the blocks you've described is amazing. What advice would you give to people trying to meet their own challenges? What works, what doesn't? That is very individual to each person. Uh, something that works for me may not work for someone else. It just kind of goes along with what motivates you? Uh, one of my motivators when I was younger was everybody told me that you cannot do a fantasy AP portfolio. I took AP art twice and just them saying, uh, no, you can't do that. I was like, oh, well, watch me do it. And I did and I passed. It's all about finding what works for you at that time. That wouldn't necessarily work for me now uh, as I'm diving deeper into my emotional connection to my work. Um, that is what has been driving me lately to create and to improve and to not let past experiences dictate what my life will be like, basically. Uh, just because you have had these trials and tribulations in your life doesn't mean that it has to be that way all the time. You can come to a better time in your life if you can just find that drive for you at that time to continue on with your artistic goals. Myra asks, has this last year during the pandemic given you more time and space to work on your art or has it been more of a struggle? It has been an incredible struggle that I have never experienced before in my life. Uh, there is so many things that are hampering creatives' abilities right now. Our drive and our internal motivation to work. We have all kind of been in a fight or flight stage for the past year. Uh, I mean, it started with the earthquakes last year during LTUE. Uh, and then the pandemic that hit. Uh, and it's okay to not be as creative right now. You are working on trying to survive, basically. And for me, I really haven't done much work other than my two big pieces that I worked on for a local company in Orem. And my creative drive basically it's just kind of been dormant um, and that is something that you're going to want to take note of you can help bring yourself out of that for many artists uh, it's therapeutic to work on art but it needs to be something that you really want to focus on at that time uh, I've been working on painting at the Museum of Ancient Life doing paleo work and interacting with the kids in public at the museum. That's been one thing that I've used to try to separate myself from kind of my day job, so to speak, and do something that's a little bit different and fun to try to trick my brain into getting back into the creative mode, along with um, watching videos of other creative people uh, like I had mentioned before, to try to spark that inspiration. But if you feel that inspiration to work, definitely try to hop on that right now. Uh, it's been few and far between for me. So if there's a piece that's really speaking to me, I tend to try to really dive into it. Like Genesis, this piece was created very quickly, like within, I think, three or four days. Uh, and that was the 
best piece I had done for like probably six to eight months and just working on trying to find what makes you want to work on art right now. It's really important. Okay. Chanel asks, can you talk more about why you connect so much with dragons? What is it about them that you find intriguing? It's always been just something for me that latches on to dragons. I'm not quite sure what started it other than uh, the cartoon Hobbit that I watched when I was growing up, um, along with a few other uh, books and movies, Dragonheart. Um, I think Dragonheart was probably the one movie where I saw a different side of dragons that I really wanted to elaborate upon. For me, the dragons weren't some monstrous, destructive force of nature. I mean, they can be. However, I really connected with the more Asian-style dragons, but I liked the look of the European dragons. So I kind of combined them together to make, for me, what a perfect dragon would be, which would be a force of nature that was sentient and had the ability to choose. And for me, dragons are gods, basically. They have the ability to create and destroy, and they can choose to be either good or evil, a lot like people. We all have a choice of being able to uh, self-destruct, so to speak, or we can grow and choose to learn from those around us. And for me, that's basically what a dragon is, and the ability to have the raw power of a dragon, but to not use it to be able to, if, if they used it, to use it for good, basically. Okay. Uh, Shenmi Gumi Gummy uh, asks, do you have extensive world building, or do you do extensive world building when creating your work? Or are the backdrops in your work just scenery for your dragons? I absolutely am world building. Uh, I have two projects going on right now. Uh, Dragons Kill with Fire, which is an anthology of 25 images with uh, 25 stories that go along with it that eventually could be a novel. However, with everything that's happened this year, uh, my artwork has taken a little bit of a different direction. So now I'm working on Drawn to Dragons, which is a lot more of the spiritual aspect of dragons and my dragons in particular. Uh, I love having each of my dragons be a character. Um, and oftentimes I really don't know where that character is going. I don't know their name. I don't know what their story is until sometimes even three or four years later when I create another illustration that fills in the pieces for me. Um, it's a fun way to work, but it makes it a tiny bit hard to get uh, Dragon's Kill with Fire put together. Um, but there, there's so many stories I feel that I want to tell, and I'm sure that all of you also want to tell with your art or with your writing. And that's definitely a very important part for my workflow and my work process to know the character and the story behind each of my pieces. Okay, Natasha asks, how do you maintain your sense of wonder as an artist? 
Oof. It's really easy and hard uh, in this day and age. It's very easy to get inspiration and to find beautiful and wonderful things, but it's also easy to find not so wonderful things. Um, I tend to keep my feed on, say, Facebook or Twitter uh, full of positive things. By creating a little bit more of a positive environment, uh, I can create a very, very easy way to get my sense of wonder or inspiration back. Uh, going out and hiking, uh, I do a lot of fishing, uh, finding new places to visit, or just simply browsing Pinterest and looking for uh, new animals or um, locations that I think uh, might be really cool to put a dragon in. I'll oftentimes find a ton of photos and just be like, oh, I could see a dragon here or there or, you know, anywhere in between. And that helps me uh, kind of keep my, my spark going and my wonder for creating something new and different. Okay. Uh, that looks like all the questions we have. Excellent. Um, honestly, just to keep searching for what inspires you to create and keep building your inner circle and your outer circle. Don't, don't let other people's uh, negative life views or uh, comments about your work. Uh, don't don't let them bring you down. Basically, uh, it's a constant struggle to keep in a good creative mindset. And any small change that you can do now to make sure that you have a safe and welcoming artistic circle, or even just your friends and family, anything that you can do to make that better now will really pay off in the long run. And it's important to be yourself and find what makes your work stand out from everybody else's, because that's the way that you're going to fulfill your creative visions and that's really all i have to say is just um keep working on yourself and your art and everything else will come in time <laughs>